It's now time for us to approach the footer template. Rather than building on the home page, we need to actually go and create a footer template. So go back into WordPress, go to templates and click saved templates and then click add new template. If you ever want to remind yourself of what you have, click the all button and we currently have the default kit and the header template. I'm going to click add new template and I'm going to select footer and I will name it footer template. Let's click create template. Rather than using any of the provided templates, I'm going to build one from scratch. Again, don't worry about it saying footer template here because this will not be visible when we actually get to our actual home page or any page where we display it. To keep it simple, I'm just going to do a plus sign. I'm going to add in a flex box and I'm going to drop one in that already has two child containers. We will be using a third child container. So I'm just going to go and insert this. Then I'm going to hit publish. I'm going to go for add condition and I'm going to set it to be the entire site. Remember, you can set it for individual pages. You can also exclude. You can also set it for particular categories or maybe the page or a post was created by someone in particular. But now we're just going to go for the entire site. Hit save and close. Then I will shut this down and go over to my home page. And when you refresh the home page at the bottom, the footer is now there. Now you might think it isn't because we didn't actually add any content. So if this confuses you, just drop an example header widget into the footer before you publish and save and close it. So what I'm now going to do is go and pick up some items that I've already built out here. For instance, I'm going to pick up my social sharing icons. I'm going to go down to the footer and I will now open it up. I will then paste that into the first child container because it saves me having to recreate it from scratch. I can just reuse what I've already got. Let's go and tidy this up a little bit. We're going to click the parent container and I'm going to set it to be a boxed width of 1200. Go to my advanced tab and we'll sort out the padding. I'm going to go for 180, 20, 180 and 20 again. Footers don't have to be super, super big. So you may want to reduce this down to be something like 80 or 90 even. But I'm just going to make it big because I just want to show you how it looks. Back over to my layout, I'm going to ensure the direction is set to be a row and the gaps are set to zero. I'm just going to rename the parent container footer container. I'm also going to give this a background color. Now, rather than continuing the soft gray that I've always done, I'm going to go for my secondary color instead. And before I continue, I'm just going to go to my icons and I'm going to change the colors that we used here as well. So I'm going to set my primary color to be white. And then for my secondary color, I'm going to use the same secondary color we've got there. I will go to my first child container and I'm going to set the width of this to be 33.3%. It's currently set as a column and I'm just going to zero out the margin and padding. I will now copy that and duplicate it or paste the style on the second child container. And while we're here, I'm now going to duplicate that. So what we have is three child containers that are all set to be 33.3% in width. We will probably modify this when we start to add in our items. So let's go and add some items into the first container. I'm going to drop in a heading and I'm going to drop in an icon. Let's rearrange the order. So I've got the icon, the heading and the social icon. Let's change our icon. We'll go for the white one there. I've clicked fit to size and I've set the size to be 20. There is a bit of a gap there. So I'm just going to apply some negative margin on the bottom of about five. Now at the moment, this is not very clear at all. So I'm going to go back to my content and I'm going to change it to be the darker one or the black logo. I will then go to the advanced tab and I'm going to give this a background color of white. I'm going to give it a border radius of 15. I'm going to add in some padding. So I'll make it equal all the way around. Something like five will do. And to make the background fit the size of the logo, rather than doing a custom width, I'm just going to say align the self. So when I click start, can you see what it's done? And if you wanted to add in more padding, maybe on the right hand side, you could do. But we're just going to leave that as five. I'm not going to use the heading. I'm actually going to use some text. So I'm going to click here and click text editor, get rid of the heading. I will modify the text. I'm going to go to my style tab, make it be a white font. I'm going to make the weight of it be 600. Go to my advanced tab and I'm going to use the class for extra small. Now let's go to the second child container. 
Inside of here, I'm actually going to drop in a copy of the nav menu. So rather than adding in a brand new one, I'm going to hit publish, go up to my header and click it. So now we're inside the header. I will then copy my nav menu. I will then go back down to my footer and click it again. And this is why adding in a template and adding it to the home page, it makes it easier to jump around and use items or content you've already built out. So into this child container, we are now going to paste the WordPress menu. It's actually over there. Let's go and align it to the left hand side. But we do need to change the color of this from black to white. Now at the moment, we don't have a class. So let's just go and hit publish and remind ourselves of what we have in the site settings. Let's go to custom CSS. And we can see here for the elemental nav menu, we are using the primary color. If you have been watching the other videos when we were working on the hero banners, we did have an alternate version that actually was using the overlap class. So we could use this class. The trouble is though, is that if you look at the font size, it's one REM to 1.125. And the extra small is actually 0.82 going to 0.94. So here's what we could do. We can actually go and create another class. And I'm gonna call this one footer. I will then pick up the code that we have here, copy it and replace what we have below, but this time this is for the footer and it will apply this to the class footer for the nav menu and it has got the white color. Let's go and hit save changes, go back to our footer, go to the advanced tab and I'm now gonna type in footer and that has shrunk and it's gone to white. I'll remove it just so you can see it. Watch the size of the words as I hit return, it's now shrunken down. Excellent, we only have one item in there at the moment, we will return to this once we add in further pages. Now I know that my nav menu is not going to be that wide. So is it okay to give it this entire 33.3% estate? I don't think so. So we're going to go over to our child container and I'm now going to reduce this to be something like 20%. I will then go to my parent container, go to my layout and I'm going to select space between. So what we now get is some breathing space between con child container two and child container one. And we have child container three as well. Again, there is a gap between them. Now I'm gonna drop some further items into here. I'm gonna hit publish for a moment. I'm gonna scroll up to my contact section and we're actually gonna get the icon list we used here. To access that, we may have to go all the way to the top and click edit page. Then we go to the contactors container and where we were using the icon list, I'm just going to copy that. I will then scroll down to our footer and go back inside of it. And into the third child container, I will right click and paste. We are now reusing what we had before. We're gonna to have to make some changes to the styling, of course. So let's click the pencil, go to text, and I'm gonna set it to be white. I will also set the typography of this to be 600. The formula is using the 1 to 1.25 REM, which was the same as normal. I actually want to use extra small. This will now shrink down. However, we do have the issue with the black underline. And the way to address this is to add in a bit of CSS. And we're going to add in this bit of code. That now makes it underlined. Of course, you do have a bit of a gap here with the at sign, but that's acceptable. We're now going to expand on this icon list. So I'm just going to add a new item. I'm gonna get rid of the icon and I'm gonna call it privacy policy. We won't add a link in yet until we've built it out. I will then duplicate that. We'll rename this to be cookies policy. And then I will duplicate again and say built by web squadron. You could add further items here like terms and conditions, refund policy, web accessibility statement as well. Have a look at the things that we provide as freebies from our website. Let me rearrange the order of these. So we'll put the privacy policy at the start, cookies next, and we'll leave built by web squadron at the bottom. Now, one of the items that is missing is the copyright year. By the way, I should mention, we're gonna wait until we have further items appearing here for the menu before I go and address the gaps that we currently have here. So we will sort that out later on. But for now, let's go and add in our copyright. I'm gonna just duplicate what I've already got here, built by Web Squadron. I'm gonna go open it and I'm gonna get rid of the text. Don't forget, you could have had icons for all of these items as well. Instead of adding text, we're gonna click dynamic tag. 
and I will scroll down until we have current date time. Now, when you do that, it's just going to bring out the entire date. What you want to do instead is click the spanner or the wrench, and you then want to click on the date format and you want to go to custom. And instead of you adding in the day and all of that, you just want to type in Y. And that's going to give you the entire year. The time has now disappeared. Having that on its own doesn't look so good. So go back into it and this time click advanced. If you go to Google or any other browser and type in copyright symbol, you will find pages with it. And all you got to do is copy over the symbol. Go to where it says before and now paste that symbol in and it will appear. You can also, if you want, add in some words before or after the symbol and they will appear there. I'm just going to have the symbol for now and I'm going to get rid of the wording. I will add in a space just so it spaces out a little bit better. And in after, I will add in a space again and I'm going to have copyright and all rights reserved. Why is it good to do it this way? Well, each year this will automatically change. Whereas if you have manually go and typed in 2024, you've got to remember to change that now for you and your clients' websites each time the new year arrives. This will now automatically update for you. From a basic footer point of view, this is as basic as it gets really. And you could add in further items. You could drop in a contact form or further details or even images, even Instagram feeds if you wanted. But the footer is kind of the footer of the website and you want to keep it simple because you want the focus to be on the items and content above. Let's go and hit publish. Now let's go and check how it looks on the mobile. Let's adjust the amount of padding. 60, 20, 60, 20. Our first container is set to be a full width. We then have our second container and we're going to come back onto the toggle in a moment. We have our third container and don't forget we will adjust the gaps between them once we've built out the nav menu later on. What I will do though is go to my parent container, go to my layout and where we have the column and the row gaps, I'm going to increase the row gaps to be 30. I will then go to my menu over here. I'm going to click on the content tab, go to where we have the toggle our line and I'm going to left align it. But here's the question you have to ask yourself. Do you really want the user to have to click that and then have a drop down? Or better still, and this is what I strongly recommend you do for when you get to footers, you have no mobile drop down. So on your first tab, the content tab for your WordPress menu, go to mobile drop down and set that to be none. Again, this just keeps things really, really simple so that if at any point anyone comes over here to the footer, they can just click and go to where they need to go. Don't forget to hit publish when you're done.